Welcome. I'm Michael Bicker. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. Grab your notepads, grab your pens, because I want you to take notes. I want you to make a commitment to yourself that you will jot down some sort of action item that you can implement in your business today. That's what this is all about, implementation to drive your business forward. We're gonna continue our discussion about marketing and sales. I think this is the seventh installment in this playlist. Now you don't have to stop and go back and watch everything chronologically. It's just that marketing and sales is such a big topic. There's such a wide scope of uh, interests and uh, things to talk about relating to marketing and sales that we really had to break it up. Today, I'm going to talk about target market. What we want to do is define your ideal customer. Who is most suited, most matched? Who is the perfect customer for your products or services? Now, so many of the managers I speak with, they seem to want to respond to that question by saying, well, everyone. And regardless if they deal with people who are making individual purchases for themselves personally, or their B2B business to business products or services, people are saying to me, well, you know, I'm open to anyone. Any customer is good for me. I understand that it's counterintuitive, but I want you to narrow intentionally narrow your search for the ideal customer. And we want to define our target market by those that we for, one reason or another that we'll explore today would be ideally suited for. Who are those people? What what businesses or families are we are are our um, products and services ideally suited for? You, it's counterintuitive, and you're going to have to sort of let go of the notion that I'm open to everyone. Now, of course, you can absolutely provide your products or services to anyone who who wants to deal with you, who wants to engage with you. That's that should go without saying. So why I'm telling you to ideally narrow the search as specific as possible is because you have limited resources. You are not able to be all things to all people. And even though you're open to, you know, generating business and engaging with perhaps anyone who wants to engage with your business, that is not a good marketing approach. When we're looking at our marketing strategy, you're gonna spread yourself far too thin if you try to communicate to everyone. There is a total market out there. We understand that every person in the world is part of the market insofar as they engage in products and services, that's everyone. But there are certain reasons why your products and services may be more ideally suited for certain individuals, certain families, certain businesses, and that's what we're gonna to explore today. So your exercise today, I want you to sort of have a, a mental attitude of what if you could satisfy, you could reach total capacity and satisfy all your goals and dreams regarding profit and revenues with only a specific type of customer, your perfect customer, who would that be and why? Now it's just a mental exercise and I'll remind you once again, you're going to take the business of anyone that that you can and we can always change your definition but we're gonna seek to define who your target market is right now so that we can use that as part of our marketing strategy if you don't do this narrowing exercise in the beginning you'll be having way too broad of an approach as it uh, relates to your marketing strategy and you'll be you know you won't have enough resources to go around you're gonna be once once again spread far too thin so before you may have been thinking well if I could just get a little sliver of the pie if I could just get a little small share of this huge market of people who could potentially want my products or services I'd be great I'd f fulfill all my uh, business goals and projections we're going to look at it the opposite way today instead of getting a little sliver what i want you to do is i want you to dominate and have a large market share of a very niche market so you're looking at a very specific small market that you are intending to serve but you're going to dominate that market so as part of this mental exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to explore and describe our businesses in three key areas, that being geographic, 
uh, demographic and interest base. So we're going to look at ourselves, our products, our services, and our ideal customers and give consideration to each of those three categories. And while we're doing this, what will happen naturally is you will start to see how this would shape your strategy for marketing. And we'll, I'll, I'll endeavor to give you a few examples of how these things may be relevant. So let's start with geographic. So geographically, describe your business. And are you set up ideally to be able to serve people locally? Is that what you wanna do? You wanna serve people locally or regionally or perhaps nationally? Of course, you could serve internationally, more than one country, or even globally, that you're open to the whole world. Now, once again, it's, I understand your intuition tells you, well, I wanna be open to as broad a market as possible, but you don't really want that. You want to dominate a market that you are set up ideally to consider. Now, does that mean everyone should be local? No, it depends on your type of business. In fact, locally, you may not do very well. Your business may not be situated in, in such a uh, geographic market that you are ideally suited to serve that. You may be located in one country, but your ideal customer actually resides in another country. And in this day and age, with the technologies available, that's not a problem. So don't assume that because I say we want to dominate a small market, we want to be very niche or niche, as they would say in the United States, uh, that you you got to start as uh, as locally ge geographically speaking as possible that's not accurate give consideration to your business so for example if you are just naturally suited to serve your local market then you could understand in your marketing strategy perhaps you want to get a very strong reputation locally maybe you're going to consider some sponsorship some com community involvement in your grassroots uh, marketing events you might go out and see the people face to face you may actually hand out free samples you might sponsor a local uh, children's sports team you might uh, sponsor their jerseys with your name on it or at the local arena or something you might uh, advertise on the boards uh, maybe in your local church or parish you have uh, a bulletin where you can advertise because you're trying to dominate and again when we consider our limited resources how are we going to spread those out if you've made the decision locally is the best way to do this then you will have your dollar your budget your resources will stretch much further and you can then make logical choices we've had a whole nother video on the different types of marketing traditional marketing as well as digital and you can make decisions based on that but the the idea today is defining your market why why are you more apt to serve a local market or why would you maybe be more suited for regional like spreading that out a little further uh, could be you know based on the description of business you have you may decide that well the local market is just far too small there is michael a very niche target market that I have, but I need to be able to satisfy the needs in terms of the volume of customers I need. And locally, maybe you live in a small town, your business is situated in even a particular city. But let's say, for example, you run a shipping company and you need and you have you specialize in more long haul shipping and you want to be able to uh, service across the country or something like that. It's like, well, you know, if I just focus locally there's a lot of businesses and population here but a lot of maybe your research and your market research has indicated that a lot of the shipping is last mile shipping locally but that's not what you specialize in you actually specialize in going between major markets between big cities and that kind of thing so you can appreciate based on your business it would lend itself to marketing to a specific type of customer. And then right away, as we give that example from going from local to more regional or broader to nationally, you would change your strategy. Again, you're looking at your resources and what are we going to do? Well, now, if I'm going to do some sort of um, traditional marketing, I'm probably not sp sponsoring local sports teams and everything where someone may recognize very readily the name of my company, but it's like, that's not my ideal market. That's not my target market. Now I want to, use those media channels and those sources of advertising that would uh, appeal to people in different markets across the country 
in, in that example. So the first area that you need to give consideration to is your um, geographic market. Now, if you're thinking globally, then I think what makes the most sense is you're going to go heavy into digital. You want to make sure, you know, the world wide web. There's a reason it's called that you have worldwide reach when you do a lot of digital marketing. And, you know, in any of these things, I'm not making an assessment. You have to do this regarding your business. But digital marketing can be very effective on an international and global basis. So you can stretch your resources far further. But then even then, once we've made that decision, now we're going to dig in a little deeper in our strategy with these other two categories and ascertain, well, even if you're doing global, global or international, you can still define, well, which countries are best suited to be ideal customers for me. And then you can, you know, geofence your advertising to be within your digital advertising and your search engine marketing, that kind of stuff within those regions. So let's look at the next category, which is demographics. And again, we can then decide on our strategy for marketing based on these types of questions. So demographics has to do with things like what about the ideal age of your customer? Once again, resist the urge to say, well, we'll take money from any age of person. Of course you will. Of course, you're happy to deal with all customers. Everybody's welcome here, so to speak. But we're making a strategy and we're going to take our limited resources and we're going to pour and be very focused in our approach of marketing. So is there an ideal age? And it may not be your business or product or service may not lend itself to be more favorable or suited or desirable by one age group versus another. But many businesses are. Uh, for example, if, in, if you're in healthcare, you might say, well, I'm, I'm happy to take on patients of all ages, of course, but is there a reason that you might uh, do better with one particular age group? It might be, again, based on your geography, you have an elderly population where you live and there aren't a lot of kids. There are some small towns where based on a certain age, the, the kids are moving away to go to college, university, that kind of thing. And so, uh, and then the, the people that are sticking around are, are more, you know, elderly population. And those might be the people that have issues related to their health that you specialize in, that kind of thing. So give thought to this kind of thing and jot this down. Remember, we're, we're defining this today. We're all about exploring and brainstorming, describing our products, our services, and those things that describe what it is that make up our business and uh, affect our business, such as our geography and uh, demographics. And then we make a strategy from there. So I just mentioned age, but it could also be income level. So you might have products or services that are ideally suited for somebody in a lower income class because the value represented by your product or service is your price. Uh, I have a friend who develops lower income uh, property, real estate, and uh, it's subsidized in some way. And uh, I, I'm not a big proponent of government subsidies of uh, any kind of distortions of markets, but I don't want to go off on that tangent. But in his case, if he was doing marketing, because it's still a private thing, it's not government, government run, he would want to understand and define that his target market is not somebody looking for luxury condos. Conversely, if you were a developer of luxury condos, you would want to understand that. So income is another part of the demographic. What other sorts of demographics should you consider? What about uh, is there uh, your product or service more desirable to one sex than another, male or female? Or is it equally attractive to members of both sexes or does it matter in your product or service you know we think of something like um, a shaving product of course both men and women shave but uh, uh, men predominantly shave their face and you can think of companies that offer shaving products that definitely target their market towards men where other products may be more targeted towards women. And the same thing can be true of your product. So give consideration. Is there a reason why your product might be more favorable by a man than a woman or vice versa? Demographics matter. Again, 
resist that urge. I can just feel it from some of you are going, well, no, I'm, I'm open to both. I'll take money. That's how small business owners think, but we want to take our guide and our learn our lessons from logic and also what the big guys are doing. There's a reason that they narrow in on a specific market. That is, you want to dominate that market and then you can expand outward from there. Give consideration to whether you are uh, gearing your products or services to people who are buying for themselves personally or they're spending other people's money business to business. That's going to impact your um, marketing efforts. Like, are you going to go into a trade show if you're looking for people who are buying stuff for them specific, perhaps, but what kind of trade show? You know, maybe you, you might uh, attend a, um, a car show or something like that because a lot of people are there for investigating and uh, researching or because of their hobby that they're considering uh, looking at cars and that that's a place you might find people who are making personal purchase decisions but if you were a maker of tools for example or a retailer of tools you might go into a trade show that's specifically meant for tradespeople the those that are carpenters or mechanics of some kind whatever the specific trade show is you can appreciate your marketing would be different for one or the other what about are you looking for people who are married or single people you can appreciate some products and services are more geared towards single and perhaps you run some sort of uh, hospitality industry related business like a bar a, uh, a pub and are you more uh, family friendly restaurant uh, and uh, lounge or are you more geared towards the young crowd and you've got a DJ and you know the, the music's pumping or what have you those types of things are you looking for people who have children families or people without um, children again in my example hospitality industry maybe you run a motel or a hotel an independent organization and uh, do you have facilities that are are that are conducive and lend themselves to people who have children or what about pet owners or not? So consider all the demographics. That list is by no means comprehensive. And as we go through this, you can appreciate it's a brainstorming exercise. So give yourself uh, lots of time for this and try to define as accurately as possible. And like I said, it should organically be getting you to go, oh yeah, now I see as I do this that my business does lend itself more to this demographic, to this geography more than others. and you can then design your strategy of marketing around that. Lastly, we're gonna look at interests and what kind of interests are do you have? Uh, does your the culture of your business have? Does your community have? Or does your target market have? Perhaps your uh, ideal customer is very interested in nature. And so maybe you have a business that you know your brand is all about the outdoors and nature. Maybe you have a food product that is, you know, ideally um, suited for somebody who's going to keep it in their backpack while they go out hiking in the mountains or that kind of stuff. If you run that kind of business, it's probably a passion and an interest of yours as well as your customers. That's very common is that your interests are also the interests of your customers. It's not necessarily the case, but it's very often the case. So give consideration to that. What about sports? Is that is your product or service uh, in some way related to sports or would be ideally branded uh, along with sports. What about fitness and nutrition? How about pop culture and entertainment uh, or fashion? You can appreciate as you think of these things that there's a very different marketing approach and strategy. If your ideal customer was very fashion oriented, that's a very aesthetic industry. And so you're probably going to have a marketing approach that's much more visual. You might engage in the display network in terms of uh, your advertising. You might want to invest more in your website and photography and all, all that kind of stuff than somebody who has something that's more industrial nature and it's more suited to you know solving a very specific problem, engineering, analytical type uh, product or service that's different than an aesthetic thing uh, what about baking or cooking give consideration to all the various interests and just sort of explore that I mentioned pets pet owners is a big thing these days and uh, you know there's this whole culture around having pets and everything what 
marketing strategies will you put in place? Where will you direct your resources when you give consideration to the definition of your ideal market and their interests? Your goal here is to match your product or service strengths with those who will most appreciate them. I've heard it said that no one can compete with you at being you. And I want you to focus on that statement. It's very powerful. And I want you to think of this both personally and organizationally. So describe yourself. Though, what strengths do you have? And you can think of this at, along the lines of your product and services as well, but I want you to get a little bit more personal and think about your culture of your business and you personally. So when we talk about your interests, what are your interests? What are your strengths? And then what we can do is we can examine how that might actually be an add to value for your products or services to your customers. How might that appeal? When we say that no one compete with you at being you, what we're saying is even your, like your strengths, of course, you want to examine your strengths. What are your greatest strengths? So we talk about geography. Well, our, our greatest strength is location. We are very conveniently located close to this particular place where people go all the time. It might be downtown. It might be close to a public transit station or we're ideally situated at a very busy intersection. We're very close to this particular theme park. It's very convenient for people to come over to us when they leave. Whatever the case may be for your product or service, give some consideration to those strengths and then highlight those and give some consideration to what type of people must appreciate those strengths most. And are they different from uh, other people who may not care about that as much? But more than that, I want you to think about your weaknesses. What about your quirks? When we think of that concept of no one can compete with you at being you, you have weaknesses, but we can sometimes flip those around and make your weaknesses your strengths. I'm thinking of maybe one of the most famous examples is, um, what is it called? Like the Seattle uh, fish market. I forget the actual name. I don't think that's exactly it, but maybe you've seen this but it's very, it's worldwide famous now. One of the weaknesses, of course, for being a fishmonger and being in the fish business would be it would, it would smell, it'd be, it would reek, and people wouldn't be particularly interested in handling the fish, and maybe it's not you know, a, a really inviting environment compared to other types of businesses. I mean, if you picture a, a nice clothing store and uh, the ambiance there versus a fish market, you know, night and day, which one would you rather spend time in? But the Seattle fish market, they went out of their way to really make it a strength of theirs. They got loud, they shouted with one another, and they made it a big show and a production to get your fish. And so they would throw the fish from one to another, the fishmongers at one another, and they'd wrap it fast and they'd, you know, make you part of the show if you wanted. Maybe they'd ask you to catch it. All the things. Now it's part. Of, now they are the customer experience takes one of their weaknesses and makes it a strength. It's like, well, if I'm gonna miss this fish, if they throw it at me and I miss it, all these kind of emotions and people would be very memorable. And that stuff becomes viral in terms of marketing. So they created videos on that, and people would share those experiences. You can imagine all the selfies and the. Yeah, and the people that are recording this on their cell phones and sharing that on social media and everything. What weaknesses does your business have that you might be able to lend to strengths? You can flip them around, turn them around and create strengths out of them. I'm, I'm thinking of just as a ridiculous example, maybe your location is close to um, some train tracks and every now and then you get some shaking and vibrations going and a loud whistle or, or something like that of the train tracks and that drives you nuts and you think you have, I mean, you got this smoking deal on rent for your business because of uh, its proximity to the tracks, but that's a, you know, a really uh, negative thing you think, that's a weakness. Well, could you make a show out of that every time the train comes, you know? You play that song, the hippie hippie shakes or whatever, and uh, you know you have your own whistle, or it's 10% off while the uh, it's the train whistle special or whatever, and then people start to talk about that. Think about those little quirks about your business, whether it's your location or it could be something about your. We want to think about your facility, of course, and we want to think about your products and services. But what about the people? Maybe you have somebody in your business who. You, you've never really got to know them and they're capable of breakdancing. 
It's like, well, that's nothing to do with my business. I don't care what they do in their spare time, but they have a skill like that. Could you incorporate that? Or maybe somebody can sing or they play the violin. Are there things and special talents and skills that your people have that you are not leveraging because you've never taken the time to brainstorm this. Just think of the quirks. Nobody can compete with you at being you. So you have a competition or you have competition down the road or whatever, and they have a different team. And maybe they don't have anyone on their team who can break dance. They don't have anybody on their team who can play guitar. I have a uh, um, former employee who, uh, shout out to RS, you know who you are, who played guitar and he made that part of our business. He brought his guitar in and he would play with uh, customers there and everything. It was just part of who he was. And so there were videos uh, around that and all this kind of thing. You can, in this day and age, be creative. Think about your people, your products, your services, your facility, your location. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and how can you turn those around? Ask yourself, who would most value this? Who would most appreciate this? And that's your homework today. Write that down. You're, you're trying to define your ideal customer, your perfect customer. If we were, if this was analogous to a dating app or you were trying to find your future spouse, you're like, well, I, you know, I'm open. I'm not that picky or whatever. Well, be picky, be as picky as possible with the assumption that you are able to fulfill your dreams and get all of your wishes here. Who would that be? Because we only have a finite level of resources in order to expend and deploy in our marketing strategy. And so the more specific you are, the more laser focused your marketing strategy is going to be. Now we're going to collect data. I want you, of course, always we talk about measurement and in marketing, we talk about operationalizing and quantifying things, letting the market give you data feedback. So the market might tell you something that is opposed to or it's the opposite of what your perception was or your assumptions. Allow the market, don't be afraid, allow the market to change your perceptions and to correct your assumptions if they're wrong. It's, it's good, that's a good thing. Remember at the beginning we said, we're going to go through this exercise to try to be as narrow in our approach as possible, as specific as possible to define our target market, our ideal customer, but we're open to changing that definition as we learn. So record the data from the market. So what are you what are you doing in terms of collection of customer information? Do you have a good CRM strategy? And do you have your entire team collecting data that will help you to redefine over time and continuously improve your actual description? So in today we started the discussion of sort of making some assumptions and your perception brainstorming because most of you've never done this of what do you think your customers are but also give consideration to all the business that you've been doing and maybe you've never asked yourself and you go you know what come to think of it yeah i, I think we do have like 80 percent female customers i've never really thought of that before or whatever well now you now that you've realized it mark that down and your strategy would change is there a particular media marketing channel that appeals more to women than men and could you be directing your resources more effectively there when i talk about your crm strategy and your team you have to train them you have to coach them and let them know what you're looking for so you might say well hey i want to know if this customer is male or female i want to know if they're married or single i want to know if they have kids or don't have kids you don't have to have all of these things but you start to collect the demographics as it is most pertinent to your business, to your products and services. Where do our customers live? That's a very interesting thing. Back in the day, I remember having a map and we would record a pin in the map of where our customers were. Now you can do that digitally on your computer and we can interact that or integrate that rather with your CRM and you can get a visual depiction very uh, quickly uh, as, um, specific as you wanted, where your customers come from. You might find, wow, we've been spending a bunch of money marketing locally, but it's actually the next town over that we get all of our customers from, or, you know, 70% of our customers, the Pareto principle, you get, you're getting 80% of your results from 20% of your customers. There's all sorts of things that data will reveal to you. And then you can refine your approach and your strategy. But if you're not recording the information, the geographic information about your customers, the demographic 
information about your customer and the interests of your customers. How many of your customers are pet owners and uh, how many of them are into fitness? What are your customers into? How did they hear about you? That's a big one, record the source. Is it just because they drove by, they saw your signage for your brick and mortar location or did they see you online? And uh, often we are get surprised, our perception is not reality. We get surprised when we find out that all the efforts we're spending in one area are not resulting in conversion of leads or bringing in business, it's something else. But if you're not asking the question, you're not gonna have that and you can't change your strategy. Remember, we are always wrong. It's just a question of to what degree are we wrong? We wanna become more and more right. You wanna think of that as a spectrum and as we like to say, we wanna be better than yesterday. It, it starts with collecting data. So when you're defining your target market as we've been trying to do today, remember that we're gonna let the market actually is going to define it for us and we're going to be accepting of that. Don't push back against the market. Maybe you created a product or service that you thought would be ideal for a specific demographic but a different demographic grabbed a hold of it for some reason. Sometimes we don't realize that there's a particular feature or benefit that really appeals to somebody or they use our product quote unquote wrong. They're using the product wrong and they're our best customers. Well, then I want you to adapt. I want you to go, okay, well, we've got a target market there. There is a niche there. Let's start directing some of our marketing resources toward that. Do not have this preconceived notion of exactly what your product or service or business is and be so rigid. I want you to be more flexible and allow the data to convince you to change. So I think that's what I wanna leave it today. I hope you got an idea of what target market's all about and I hope you will do that counterintuitive experiment and examination where you decide I want to have the greatest market share of a very niche small market as possible. I'm not trying to be all things to all people. Remember, nobody can compete with you being you. Nobody can compete with your business and all its unique attributes if you make that part of the customer experience as part of the product. So uh, if you got something out of this, then I'd appreciate it if you leave a comment and when you leave a comment and somebody else reads it, we all learn and we need to learn from one another. Perpetual refinement.